Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to close your eyes for just a moment. What would it feel like to see nothing at all? Over five million blind people in the Western world only are experiencing this right now. Luckily, nowadays, we're often able to prevent blindness um, by using advances in technology. I'm an engineer from Eindhoven University of Technology, and this is what motivates me, when technology can actually make a contribution uh, to something that is meaningful, something as meaningful as preventing blindness. So how do we do that, preventing blindness using technology? We make robots for surgery, for eye surgery. And lucky us, this time so happens to be the best time to introduce new robots. We're really at the dawn of a robotic revolution. Because lately, uh, computing power has strongly increased with smaller electronics and better sensor technology than ever. And on top of that, we're at the right place. Are you aware that here in the Netherlands, uh, we're leading in the world in making high-tech systems? Rainport region Eindhoven has been chosen smartest of the world last year exactly because of that expertise in designing complex, high-precision devices. And in this talk, I want to show you an example where this expertise and precision can really make a contribution, can really make the difference. That's an eye surgery. Um, because your eye is one of the most specialized organs you have in your body. So in that sense, the surgery that goes with it should be very precise. Now, bad eyesight is often caused by diseases to the retina which is the, st uh, the tissue that covers the inner surface of your eye, and it's sensitive to light. And to perform surgery at the retina, the surgeon pierces through the wide part of your eye with tiny instruments. It's crazy, right, that the inside of your eye is performing these delicate procedures, which are among the most complex procedures in surgery, because they require a high accuracy, a high precision. But the precision of the human hand is limited. And this also limits the range of procedures that are possible. Now, actually, the largest cause to these retinal problems is diabetes. One in four diabetic patients report to have visual problems. And this problem is growing due to obesity and population aging. The number of diabetic patients will have doubled in 2020 to 140 million people in the Western world. Now, a common complication of these um, diabetic patients is that they have occlusions in these tiny veins on the retina. This, is, this pre prevents proper flow of blood, so it's actually the third largest cause of blindness in the Western world. And to treat this, a surgeon would like to pierce such a tiny vein and keep the tip of the instrument frozen there to inject the medicine, and this may take over 10 minutes. And such a vein is thinner than a human hair, so this is just out of reach of the human hand. Now, what if we could combine the skills of such an experienced surgeon with the steadiness and precision of a surgical robot? Wouldn't that be a fantastic combination? Such a robot is not yet available today, so that is why we got into medical robotics. And this is the recipe. You take a bunch of engineers, lock them up, throw in a few surgeons, and you wait for a couple of years, and then this is what they come up with together. A micro-surgical robotic system that can radically change the future of eye surgery. With this, we have already achieved an increase in precision of a factor of 10 compared to the human hand. Now, this, this robot does not replace the surgeon, but it assists him, it enhances his skills. Let's see it in action. Here I'm playing the surgeon, and the robot is uh, copying the motion of my hand. Notice that I'm making large movements where the instrument is making tiny movements, and it's mo moving very smooth, because the tremor, those vibrations that I have in my hand, is filtered out. And here you can compare the two. Here I'm controlling the robot with my right hand, and holding the instrument manually with my left hand. Now, which instrument would you rather have in your eye? <laughs> Luckily, his surgeon's hand is much more steady than mine, but it's clear that this robot enhances the surgeon's skills and it can make a real contribution. First of all, 
it can contribute to the well-being of patients. The steadiness of our robot can make existing surgical procedures more effective and safer. Less complications. But more importantly, that precision increase of a factor 10 can actually enable new procedures. Basically, less people will be blind. Now consider surgeons. They have the tremor in their hand, which increases with age. This eventually even stops them. It forces them to an early retirement. Basically, surgeons have an expiration date. We filter out that tremor, and with that, we extend their career. And another way we uh, make sure they don't expire too soon is by improving their body posture. Nowadays, they get a lot of back and neck problems because they're forced in a strained position. They have to look through a microscope while not being able to release those instruments. Our robot can easily freeze the instruments, and the surgeon can relax his hands. So we have this robot. We have it at the right place, and we have it at the right time. It contributes to patients and to surgeons. So that is why my team and I were dedicated to bring this surgical robot into clinical practice worldwide. By the way, did you all open your eyes already? <laughs> now is the time for you to all open them. Because what do we need to get this going? It's for you to have your eyes open and an open mind towards technological progress. Please don't be afraid of, of such a robot, but accept it when it can make a contribution to something as meaningful as preventing blindness. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. For Martin.